Oh, what's up guys? Justin here with the Rhino Essentials. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how we can take an object, create it with Grasshopper, and then array it along a curve. So this is great practice for any kind of things that you want to follow along curves in Rhino. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so specifically in this video, we're going to talk about arraying an object along a curve. So um, in its simplest form, this isn't really very hard to do with Grasshopper. By the way, note that I will make this example file available at the rhinoessentials.com slash grasshopper. So if you do want to download that, you can do that through that page. But what we want to do is let's go ahead and let's start by creating a path, right? So we're going to create a path and I'm just going to create a control point curve in here. Oh, we'll just go with something simple like this. Remember that we can come in here and adjust the control points if we want like more pronounced curves with our points or anything like that. But we'll go ahead and spread that out like this. So now we've got a simple curve and what we wanna do is we wanna take an object and we wanna array it along that curve. And so there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So we could just draw the object that we want to array in here and make that follow along the curve. I don't necessarily want to do that. Let's go ahead and build this using Grasshopper. So what you want to do is you want to go into your tools and you want to open up Grasshopper on the right hand side of your page. And what we want to do is we want to start by, by building the object that we want to create. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a rectangle. So we're going to add a rectangle object right here. Notice how that starts showing me a plane and I can use that in order to start um, defining things about this object. So in this case, right, I wanna go ahead and I wanna take a number slider and place it right here. And we're gonna make this number slider the X size of our rectangle. So we're just gonna double click on it and we're gonna set this with a max of 12. And we'll go ahead and set our precision to two. That's gonna allow us to set a value somewhere between zero and 12. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste that. And I'm gonna add another one of those right here. And we're just gonna drag these into our X and our Y values. So now, notice how if we apply a value to these like this. So let's say for example, we wanted this to be a two by six. What we could do is we could set our X size to be one and a half. We could set our Y size to be five and a half like this. That's generated a rectangle, which we can now extrude. And so at the moment, all we wanna do is we just wanna extrude this into 3D so that we have a board. So I'm just gonna double click in here and I'm just gonna add an extrude node right here. And what I wanna do is I wanna drag the rectangle into our base. And so right now nothing is happening because we need to dictate to this the direction that we want it to extrude and the length. And we can do that by double clicking and adding a unit Z right here. What the unit Z is going to do is this is gonna tell us to extrude this in the Z direction. Well, right now we haven't been able to dictate a length, right? Well, all we wanna to do to dictate a length is add another number slider right here. And we can use this to tell this how far to extrude this. So in this case, we're gonna give this a max of, we'll say 120 inches right now. So we'll give it a max of 120 inches and we'll go ahead and put this at two decimal places right here. But I'm just going to double click on this and I'm going to give this a starting length of 72 inches. So six feet. So notice what that's going to do is that's going to extrude this object over in our 3D space six feet like this. So now we have our first two by six that we want to follow along this path right? That's generated as our extrusion right here. Well, now what we want to do is we want to array this along our path. So if I double click in here, I can just add an option for array or curve array. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to take our extrusion, drag it into our geometry, our top node right here. And then we need to tell this what curve to extrude along. Well, all you have to do to do that is just select this curve, then right click, and click on the option for set one curve. And so basically what we've done is we've told this, okay, we wanna create an array of these two by sixes that follow along with this curve. So we don't really need to add anything else into our curve right here. We could do some interesting things with procedural generation, which we're not gonna worry about right now. But what I do wanna do is I wanna add another number slider that's going to allow me to dictate how many of these I can create. And in this case, right, we wanna set this with zero digits, and we'll give this a max of, 
we'll call it 72 objects right here. And so what that number slider in our curve array is going to do is that's gonna allow us to dictate the number of objects that are in here following along this curve, like this. So we've maxed this out at 72 right here. One cool thing to note about this is if we jump back into Rhino and let's go into a top-down view. So we're gonna to go to our top view right here. Notice how this is showing us arraying these along the curve. Well, if we move this curve around, notice how the arrayed objects are going to move with this. So if we go back into perspective mode and do the same thing, like this, whoops. Notice that our objects are going to move along with our curve. So this is the power of Grasshopper, is this is happening procedurally whenever we make a change to this curve. But we have at least one problem right now. So our first problem is that these objects aren't really following along with our curve. And so the reason why is these aren't actually rotated to follow along with this curve like this. So we need to make an adjustment. All right, so all we wanna do is we just wanna plug a value into this angle. It's really weird to me. The angle for this is in radians rather than degrees, which seems kind of silly, but whatever. Um, so I'm just gonna add a control knob in here. I'm gonna set my value or my range on this one to 360 degrees. So we're just gonna type in radians and we'll just convert our degrees to radians right here. We'll set our decimals to zero. Basically all I've done is I've created a knob in here that allows me to set a certain number of degrees. Like I said, really weird that this is in radians, um, but whatever. So now we're able to rotate this so that it fits along this path. And so now these are aligned properly. And so let's say we wanted to do one other thing. It's a little bit more interesting. So right now, right, what we've done, and I'm gonna adjust this number slider up even more. So instead of 72, I'm gonna add like 360 or something like that. That way we can add more if we decide that we wanna do that. But instead of extruding these to a fixed height, which remember we've adjusted over here so we can adjust this live, what I wanna do instead of extruding these in a straight line like this is I want these to actually extrude along a curve because I think that's gonna give me a little bit more interesting shape. So we're just going to delete out our extrude right here and we're just gonna add an extrude along. And so instead of us just setting a fixed length like this, what we can do instead is we can take our rectangle as our base, we can take our extrusion and plug it back into our rotate and everything's gonna work okay here. But instead of having this just extrude six feet or whatever, what we can do instead is let's go into our front view right here and let's add a curve. So I'm just gonna add a simple curve like this, but then we can take our extrude along and we can select this curve. We can set the option for set one curve. Well now, what that's going to do, and we're gonna jump back into perspective mode, is now we've got an object that's being extruded along a curve rather than an object that's being um, dictated by a length. So if we were to, and I'm gonna to toggle back into my four window view right here, but now we can adjust this curve and notice how when we adjust this curve, these objects are going to adjust as well. So now what we've got is we've got the ability to create an object that falls along a curve. So just for a moment, I'm gonna turn off the preview right here because I think it's a little distracting. But what I can do is I can take this object and I can make curving boards or other shapes like that. So this gives me the ability to pay a little bit more attention just to that piece. But let's say that we wanted this to be some kind of a board that's got like a double curve in it, which constructability wise might be a little bit frustrating, but um, from a design standpoint is gonna be really cool. So then if I come back in here and I toggle these back on where I can preview them, you can see what this final array is going to look like. So now you've got this live array along curve where you can come in here and you can adjust, you can adjust the curve that's making up this object. And all of those changes are going to be reflected live inside of Rhino. So this is the power of Grasshopper is you can take this and you can actually build this Grasshopper script that can take two curves and it can actually create this kind of like parametric shape in real life.
All right, so like I said, I will make this available for download at the rhinoessentials.com slash grasshopper. So go check that out. So if you'd wanna download this file and give it a try, you can definitely do that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below, as well as ideas for other kinds of grasshopper tutorials you'd like to see in the future. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.